let me start with the following. I just first need to do a few thank yous. I need to start by thanking the translators who have done this amazing job communicating for us. So thank you very, very, very much. I need to thank my amazing, remarkable colleagues at the Drug Policy Alliance. I mean, <laughs> you, I know by now, by now you have some idea about what an amazing team Drug Policy Alliance is, but the, the, the 60 odd, 60 very odd colleagues of mine, you know, I mean, from Jim Klapes who organized this, and Hannah Hetzer, and Stephanie Polito, and Asha Bandelli, and Stephen Gutwillig, who started this thing off, who organized this entire program. Almost every one of my colleagues involved in organizing some element of this. The people who raised the money to pay for the scholarships, and the people who orchestrated all the finance of this thing. Every Everybody, it was all hands on deck for this thing. They worked around the clock. Drug Policy Alliance, we land up subsidizing this conference by hundreds of thousands of dollars. We forego all sorts of other things because we believe in the importance of this gathering. So will you please give a big round of support of applause for my wonderful Drug Policy Alliance colleagues. And for that matter, to Erica Daniels, who helped us organize this, to the staff of this hotel, which I have to say did a damn good job. This is a good hotel staff to work with. And of course, to all of you, to all of you. Because, you know, I said it on Thursday, we are the history and we are the future. I think if it's one thing that I ask of all of you, it is to learn, to keep learning, to learn and learn to keep your ears and your hearts and your minds open, to read and watch and to listen and to listen deeply, deeply to stay open to the possibility of continually growing and changing, to understand that what brings you to this conference and to drug policy reform in the first place, that what brought you is just a part of something so much greater and so much larger. That for most of you coming from America, hearing what is happening around the rest of the world, both that is inspiring as well as that is terrifying, that is our struggle as well. That for those of you who come here because of the issues and the problems of mass incarceration we deal with, understanding the incarceration that operates around the world, understanding all the other harms of the drug war, understanding the rights of people to use drugs without being persecuted for doing so, not to be demonized, not to be left for dead, to be given a helping hand. That's our mutual obligation to keep learning and then, as you learn, to teach what you learn. To teach what you learn. You know, I am overwhelmingly committed to the notion that, that this is not a place where we preach to the converted, but where a small group of people come together so that we can become empowered to become ever more powerful agents out in the world. That we come here with the ability to go out and teach people who have never thought or cared about this stuff, of people who operate from ignorance and fear. That obligation to learn deeply and then to teach what we know, not to be an echo, echo chamber in this little hotel room, but to go and to when we go into the South, into the, the South with the highest incarceration rates in the world two years from now, we will be more successful and more welcome to the extent by which we teach what we have learned. We cannot suffice about just talking to one another. Every one of you know that. We have to be willing to talk to those people we don't like, who don't look like us, who don't sound like us, and who don't vote like us. But that is how we're going to move to the next level. You know, these are... Ch These are, as always, and they will, as they will probably always be, challenging times. You know, we look at what happened in Paris just a few days ago, and we can see the ways in which evil and terror lurk in this world, and in which we will never, ever be free of that. 
It's how we manage it. We look at the people in our government and elsewhere and the people running office who want to respond to that sort of terror and evil in all the wrong ways by expelling and punishing those people who are fleeing that very terror. And that's not right. We see people, we see people doing with their fears today and politicians taking advantage of those fears today, just what politicians and others did with the fears around drugs in the, in the past. And that's why our struggle is not just about ending the war on drugs in America, not just about ending the war on drugs around the world. It is about taking the values of science, compassion, health and human rights, of fighting against racism and classism and subjugation, against ignorance and fear, and taking those values values to advance more closely to a civilized way of dealing with drugs and to a more civilized world all together. In that respect, I am going to keep fighting as long as I can. Drug Policy Alliance is going to keep fighting. The organizations who join us here are going to keep fighting. I am counting on all of you to keep fighting. We are not going to stop. We're going to get bigger. We're going to get stronger. We are going to not let our internal conflicts ever tear us apart because we have a commitment as a movement to freedom and justice. Thank Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and please, because I don't want to finish this off just with my words, I want to have two people come up here to finish this off in the right way. I want my colleague, Geronimo Saldana, and I want Zara, Zara Snap to come on up and do the real fitting conclusion. Thank you, Harana. Zara, come on up. Well, that is a tough act to follow because that was kind of the closing. It was pretty good there, Ethan. <laughs> Way to set it up. Okay. Wow. This has been an incredible four days. It has been outstanding. Yeah. And it makes me realize what a powerful movement we are and what a global movement we are and also how diverse we are and how much, as Ethan said, we can really learn from each other. And that's what we're here for. I mean, today and over the last four days, I've been to panels on therapeutic uses of psychedelics, on cannabis models for reform, because we actually have real regulation moving forward right now, um, the Black Lives Matter town hall. I mean, we are addressing the relevant and urgent issues of our time. And we're doing it in sensitive and in very subtle ways that are untangling the complexities of what we know about drugs and drug policy and the failure of prohibition. So it's been a really powerful few days. And not only do I think it has, this has been the largest reform conference yet, I think it's been the best. It Earth has, it has. All of you guys. Familia, it has been an honor to be here with you these past four days in solidarity, crying together, learning together, getting inspired together. Two years ago, I was sitting in that back seat my first week at DPA, listening to the brilliant Cassandra Frederica up here, wondering what the hell I'd gotten myself into. <laughs> Two years later, I see my familia. I see together, juntos, we can work to end the failed war on drugs together. As someone who works in Mexico and who's from Mexico, sometimes we only hear about the bad things. And we hear about all that we're going through as a region, all that the United States is going through, all that we're all going through around the world, these impacts. But it's coming to conferences, it's coming to the Reform Conference specifically, that gives us hope. And it's seeing all of us together. And it's not only us as individuals but the communities that we represent and the people that we bring with us and the people that we leave 
behind that we can take this knowledge back to them. Because that's what this is really about. It's about energizing us to, be, to go back and energize others. Because it is only together, all of us, that we are going to be able to dismantle the war on drugs. Juntos, un pueblo unido, together. We've heard a lot about dark days. And when I was younger, one of the most powerful things my father ever said to me was, mijo, si se puede. And I'd heard it again from the Lord's Huerta. And I recently heard it from Deborah Small, si se puede. Because together, together we can work to bring our loved ones home, to find our missing loved ones, juntos. So we're going to try and get President Obama at the White House to hear us yelling, si se puede. And we're going to start with this side saying, si this se side. puede. OK? So if you can, come on. You guys all want to get up. You want to move around. Let's make some noise. Orale, si se Let's puede. have people hear us. Empezamos. At least here. Empezamos. Let's start over here. Si se puede. Let's let them hear us at the UN, where Ongas is going to happen next year, because they need to hear us there. Si se puede. Los mexicanos ahí, muy bien. For our family, for our familia, for the desaparecidos, they know they are not alone, that we love them, that we are working to bring them home. Si, si se puede. All together. Si, si se, se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. We'll see you all in 2017. We can't